This is an overview presentation about the International Polar Year, 2007 to 8. I'll start first by talking about the history of the International Polar Year and how we came to be where we are today. The first International Polar Year was in 1882-3, was the visionary of a naval explorer from Austria called Karl Weyprecht. It involved 11 nations uh, and established 14 research stations, 12 of which were in the Arctic, 2 in the sub-Antarctic, and 700 men. Karl Weyprecht, unfortunately, didn't get to see the results of this uh, polar year, but he did, through this effort, manage to initiate the first ever international coordinated science research program. These are some photos from that polar year. Unfortunately, the scientists who were involved didn't share their data as well as they might have done, and as a result, there wasn't that much value added to their investigations. However, a few years later, in 1932 to 33, the second IPY was launched. This uh, involved 40 nations and involved exploration of both the Arctic and the Antarctic. There was a large focus on meteorology, magnetism, aurora, radio science, a lot of communication science that we depend on today. Bear in mind that this occurred during the Great Depression and also prior to the Second World War, but despite that, a huge amount of data came out of this polar year, which we are dependent on today. This brings us to the third polar year, which is also known as the International Geophysical Year. This happened in 1957 to 58 and involved 67 nations and the establishment of over 50 stations in Antarctica. An enormous amount of science came out of this effort, including the launch of the first artificial satellites, the discovery of Van Allen radiation belts, transantarctic traverses, confirmation of the hypothesis of continental drift, as well as political and social establishments such as the Antarctic Treaty and the establishment of world data centers. So these were, this was a really critical time in shaping how science was going to operate over the next 50 years. Which brings us to this fourth international polar year, 2007 to 8, and the rest of this talk will focus on what's happening in this IPY. This chart shows the wide range of research projects that are occurring during IPY. You're not supposed to be able to see the detail on here, just that it consists of a range of hexagons. Let's have a closer look at what a hexagon is. In addition to being a cutting edge research project, every hexagon on the chart addresses one or more of the central themes of IPY. These are addressing the status of the polar regions, change that is happening in the polar regions, global local connections, new frontiers of science, using the polar regions as a vantage point for science, and the human dimension, living in the Arctic. In addition, every endorsed project has made a commitment to working internationally with many partners, to building connections, to sharing their data, to becoming involved in education and outreach, and to expanding the polar community. Confusingly, this International Polar Year actually lasts for two years. It starts in March 2007 and runs through to March 2009. The reason for this is that in order to carry out an effective field season research program in either the Arctic or the Antarctic, you really need to have a summer, winter, summer. So in the first summer, you turn up, you set up your equipment, you start your experiments running, you leave them going through the winter, and then return the following summer to get a full annual data set. And due to logistics and economics, often you can't get there right at the beginning or the end of a season. So in order to give both the Arctic and the Antarctic an equal shot, as it were, um, the whole of the IPY is covering two years. So if we go back to this chart, now you know that every hexagon that's on here is a large international uh, interdisciplinary cooperative project and lasts over the two years of IPY. Every science project that's on here has made a commitment to sharing their data, which is a, a huge thing in research, and also to being involved in education and outreach. 
One of the other big differences between this IPY and previous IPYs is that there's a huge focus on people. Now, if we just look at this chart for a minute, how it's laid out is that hexagons in the bottom third broadly focus on the Antarctic, those in the top broadly focus in the Arctic, and those in the middle broadly focus on research projects which are relevant both to the Arctic and the Antarctic. Going across from left to right, you look at projects which are looking approximately at Earth, land, people, ocean, ice, atmosphere, and space. As I've mentioned before, most of these projects are interdisciplinary, however, so they could potentially appear in other places in the chart. We use this as a way of planning and understanding the huge amount of research that's going on. Here are some statistics for you. There are about 50,000 participants in IPY from over 63 countries. This research includes projects as diverse as reindeer herding, how auroras interact between the northern and southern hemisphere, a census of marine life, icebergs, ice sheets, the carving of glaciers, meteorology in the Arctic and in the Antarctic that happens year-round, plate tectonics, gateways in ocean systems, ancient history of the planet, history not only of the planet but also of people and of exploration in the polar regions, and life in the Antarctic or in the Arctic. What's it like to live there? What's it like to do research there? This is a photo of a girl from northern Siberia who's helping a researcher by taking samples every two weeks from a river nearby where she lives. In addition to every project making a commitment to education and outreach, there are also specific outreach projects including conferences, expeditions, exhibitions and many more. Some of the key messages of IPY include shrinking ice and snow, the polar regions are changing. In both the Arctic and the Antarctic, we are in some places seeing a dramatic decrease of both ice and snow. And so the science is not only monitoring this, but also trying to understand the implications of this. Our neighbors in the north, communities living in the Arctic, what is their life like? How is it being affected by the changes which I've just mentioned? Global local linkages. How do processes that are occurring in the polar regions affect those in the lower latitudes, and vice versa. New Frontiers of Science refers to the fact that there's a lot that we don't yet know and that we want to know, and the polar regions are an ideal place for these investigations. And finally, using IPY as an opportunity to make science accessible, to draw back the curtains, to show the process of science as well as the results. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website, www.ipy.org.